hear it again and again. There is a choice. You know we all have a choice. We can turn to the world or we can listen to him. There is a voice. There is a still small voice that we've heard it before. And we'll hear it again and again. There is a choice.
faces of all the poor and lonely of the world. I was not seen. We sing a mystery from the past in halls where saints have trod. Yet heaven knew the music rings to Jesus' living song of God. I has not seen. Good morning. Welcome to all of you celebrating Mass with us in person and online. Today we celebrate Wednesday of Holy Week. Our celebrant today is Father Hank. Joanne is serving as sacristan. Jim is on the tech desk. My name is Tony and I am serving as your lector. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the souls of Robert Ferretti Sr. Mary Bisson and Evelyn Zember. Please take a moment to make sure that your cell phones are silenced, and I would ask you to please join me in three rounds for the Our Jesus Prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, living Son of the living God, help me to know what you want, to want what you want, and to do what you want. Lord Jesus Christ, living Son of the living God, help me to know what you want, to want what you want, and to do what you want. Lord Jesus Christ, living Son of the living God, help me to know what you want, to want what you want, and to do what you want. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, for the Lord became obedient to death, death on a cross. Therefore, Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. So we wrap up, pretty much wrap up Lent right now this morning, and we keep going with the question of stamina and it comes down to the question of is, is stamina dedication and energy and, and, and strength for that goal, is it always a good thing? Well, no, it's not. And we are reminded of that on Spy Wednesday. And for the ways in which we have gotten a little carried away with objectives that didn't really line up with God's hopes, for the ways in which we've given ourselves to those projects that don't reflect the heart of Christ. We acknowledge our sin as we pray, Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to the everlasting life. Let us pray. God, you willed your Son to submit for our sake to the yoke of the cross so that you might drive from us the power of the enemy. Grant us, your servants, to attain the grace of the resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let him confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. Who will prove me wrong? The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. For your sake, I bear insult and shame covers my face. I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's sons, because zeal for your house consumes me and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Insult has broken my heart and I am weak. I look for sympathy, but there was none. For counts counselors, no one could I find. Rather, they put gall in my food, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Lord, in your great love, answer me. I will praise the name of God in song, and I will glorify him with thanksgiving. See, you lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds he spurns not. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hail to you, our King. You alone are compassionate with our errors. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and to tell him. The teacher says, my appointed time draws near. In your house, I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. The Gospel of the Lord. So once again, in the realm of country and Western music, we get the phrase, well, it predates the country and Western music song, but it um, certainly is made famous about you need to know when to hold them and when to fold them, right? And that's really an important distinction. And this, the, the myth into which we fall is that, um, into the, the, the fallacy into which we tumble, is that if I'm having success, that must be a sure sign to go full steam ahead. Well, no, it's not. It's absolutely not a, a sign that if this thing is working out the way I hoped, it's a really good idea. Well, 
No, that means it lines up with your hopes. That has nothing to do with lining up with God's hopes. And so it is that Judas is able to go full steam ahead with his plan, right? Let's, let's change the course of this thing when we've come not to believe that Judas really intended for them to kill Christ. But he had a plan that this is the way we're going to redirect this mission. This is the way we're going to get things under control according to my desires. And so he redirected Christ. He redirected the, the mission. Too bad he didn't know when to fold them, right? Judas, if this isn't going where you think it should go, maybe it's time for you to quit. Maybe it's time for you to step out of the organization, not to doom it, not to destroy it, not to resort to murder. No, but Judas, who knows exactly what was going on in that poor pinhead of his, right? But full steam ahead. And he made the arrangements, the thing that we talk about on Spy Wednesday, and off he went. Then, on the other hand, we get the person, the Suffering Servant Song that comes to us today in Isaiah. And in the Suffering Servant Song, from Isaiah, we get a guy who ran into what looked like a lot of failure. Um, they, were, they were roughing him up. They were not accepting his message. They just weren't taken. And so if we go by the, the, uh, the, the measure of success and failure, well, Judas was good to go full steam ahead, and Isaiah should have stopped and, and backed up and undid what he was doing. No, uh-uh. It's not about whether this is succeeds or fails. It's about whether it lines up with the heart of Christ. And success or failure doesn't always indicate that, right? Look at some of the things that have really succeeded in this world, right? Look at some of the, look at some of the military atrocities that have gone full steam ahead, right? Uh, and in America, on our dark days, we believe in the gospel of prosperity. Well, the guy's rich, he must be lined up with God's hopes, or the guy is successful in this way, or she really has a lot of success, it must be that God is smiling on her. Now, that doesn't mean anything of the sort. It just means that the, 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 the bird guts lined up in her favor at this particular time, right? So I'd ask you to notice when it was that you had to make the distinction between success in the way the world describes success sometimes, and your real deep down intuition, is this or is this not lined up with God's hopes? Huh? When has there been a time when you realize, wow, I could go full bore ahead with this thing, but that doesn't mean it has anything to do with God wants. It just has to do with what somebody else wants or their notion of success and where I will find affirmation. And at the same time, has there been a time when it looked like what was going on was a failure? We had toiled in vain, right? But it really wasn't. And that was a time to hold them, not to fold them. Sometimes when it looks like failure, we still got to hold them. We still got to stay in the game. Sometimes when it looks like success, it's time to fold them. I'd ask you to just notice a time of each example in your life, right? When that was what was going on. And what do you learn from it? And how does it teach you about Jesus? The prayers of the faithful for that discernment that we need, really, to tell the difference between success and, and in our terms and success in God's. We pray to the Lord. For the same spirit of discernment when it comes to failure, that we'll notice what it is that uh, doesn't work according to God's hopes and what doesn't work according to ours, we pray to the Lord. And for that ongoing spirit of uh, discernment in all things, we pray to the Lord. We pray for those for whom this Mass is offered, for Robert Ferretti, Sr., Bob's dad, for Mary Bisson um, at the request of Charlie and Kathy Gaska, and for Evelyn Zember, a uh, dear old friend, one of the major, major pillars of the diocese when it came to helping refugees. So for Robert and Mary and Evelyn, we pray to the Lord. For those who died on this date, for Sandra Rhodes, for Mary Martin, for Christopher Amborn, a wonderful young man from out in California, a member of a live streaming family for, who died too young, and for Rita Peterson. Uh, Jack's mom. So for Sandra, Mary, Christopher, and Rita, and for all who mourn their deaths, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the folks who are connected to the tragedy in Baltimore. We pray for the families of those who went missing. We pray for uh, the people of Baltimore, and we pray for the great inspiration of the Holy Spirit to make it get back on track. We pray to the Lord. For peace every place on earth, for peace especially in those places where there's a whole lot of violence going on, for peace in the heart of every human being, for peace among and between all religious communities and human communities, for Pope Francis, for God's blessings on him, for his intentions, for his stamina and his leadership. 
For every parishioner going through a rough patch right now, for everybody's special intentions, and for everyone receiving communion, especially everyone receiving communion here today, we pray to the Lord. And we make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, receive the offerings made here and graciously grant that, celebrating your Son's passion in mystery, we may experience the grace of its effects. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to thank you, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices blend with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and he said, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. We thank you because you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Robert, Mary, and Evelyn. 
whom you have called from this world to yourself, grant that they who have been united with your Son in death may be one with him in the resurrection. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Please welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, the Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, all honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Please don't look on our sins, look instead on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May this be the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, and eternal life to us who receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith and your love and your mercy, we eat your body, we drink your blood. Bring us condemnation, but health in mind and in body. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us to the everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring us to the everlasting life. Amen. Would you please join me in our prayer before receiving communion? My Jesus, please deepen my belief that you are present in the blessed sacrament. Help me to love you above all things and to receive you into my soul. Help me to embrace you and to unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. For uh, Robert, for Mary, and for Evelyn, we also pray for Sandra, for Mary, and for Christopher, and for Rita. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. So how about it? Times when Wow, success didn't mean do more of it. No, it was the wrong thing. It just worked out. Or apparent failure didn't mean quit. Uh-uh, right? No, God wants us to have that stamina in the places where God wants us to keep going. And sometimes we can get those dangerous bursts of stamina, unholy, uninspired stamina, right? To get us keeping doing the wrong thing. When's that been your experience? And what do we learn from it? Let us pray. Almighty God, please endow us with the firm conviction that through your Son's death in time to which the revered mysteries bear witness, we may be assured of perpetual life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Lord, grant your faithful, we pray, to partake unceasingly of the Paschal mysteries and to await with longing the gifts to come, that persevering in the sacraments of their rebirth, they may be led by Lenten works to newness of life, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. We go in peace to know, to love, and to serve the Lord. Oceans deep, my faith will stand.